Hi everybody, so let's continue on with our studies of F585 pre-release material and now we are into extract 4. This is a very long extract and so rather than just give you the questions straight away what I would like to do is to have a look at all of the data that you've been presented with for extract 4. So let me just bring up the pre-release material. Extract 4 starts on page 9 and there is an enormous amount of uh, graphical data presented in this particular extract. Obviously this page ran full of stuff and on page 11, so that's pages 9, 10 and 11. You'll be aware that extract 5 is always the essay question and so we're looking for some type of comment question on extract 4 and possibly an analyse question as well. So what I'd like to do is to just take each of these charts in turn and just provide a little bit of analysis on each. I think the first thing to note is that we're presented really with, on page 9, we're presented with a picture of world trade having fallen and the question here is has world trade fallen because GDP growth rates globally have fallen and then in pages 10 and 11 we're looking to see whether or not world trade has fallen because of greater regionalization of trade. So let's first of all have a look and consider whether the slowdown in world trade is due to falling GDP growth rates. I think it is worth mentioning at this stage that although world trade has fallen, it is still growing. So do remember that it's still a positive number. Uh, it's like inflation in that respect. The number is less than the previous year, but obviously because it's positive, there is still positive growth. So the first figure that you're presented with is this one, figure 4.1, giving a comparison of growth rates in selected countries, regions and types of economy. So let, let's just have a, a look, uh, and I do apologise if I'm stating the obvious here, but let, let's just go through this and consider the economies that we're being presented with. So if we start at the bottom of the table, we've got the EU, the European Union, You'll be aware, we have mentioned this before, there are 28 nations in the European Union. Croatia, the most recent member in 2013. And we can see that the real GDP growth number for the European Union is minus 0.3%. So that means that the European Union area as a whole experienced a contraction in the size of that uh, sort of that regional economy. Then we've got the developed economies. Now, one would think that that is potentially an average of uh, the USA number, the Japan number, and the European Union number. I think if you add those three together and divide by three, you'll get in and around uh, the 1.2%. Then we have the newly industrialized Asian economies. Uh, so we're talking about uh, South Korea, Taiwan, one or two other countries there. Japan 1.9%, USA reasonably strong at 2.3%. And then obviously the, the real outliers here are China 7.8% and Africa at 9.3%. But obviously China and Africa have come from a very low base to start with. So I think the following points are worth mentioning with regard to these numbers. First of all, you can see that it says in the top part of the screen there uh, that it, it, this is numbers data for 2012, so it's a single year. So it's not really possible to identify any type of trend here. We're only given a single year's data. As I mentioned previously, the newly industrialized Asian economies, we're talking South Korea, Singapore, Taiwan and Hong Kong. And the developed economies, I think, 
it's probably the average of the US, Japan and the European Union although whether or not that is the case I'm not too sure. We can see that European, the European Union, the, the, the economy as a whole, contracted. Now, that is even more bad news because if you look back to the extract material, and if we just flick into extract 3, uh, you can see third line here, EU intra-regional trade accounted for 71% of exports. So trade between member nations of the European Union, it was trade between, say, Britain and France, and France and Germany, 71%, almost three quarters of trade is taking place within the regional area. Now, obviously, if that regional area experiences a 0.3% contraction, that is bad news for all members of that Euro European area. We can see from the data at the top of the table that Africa and China grew very, very quickly. And it does beg the question, why did the developed economies not exploit the potential trading opportunities with those very rapidly growing developing economies? There are a few reasons for that, I think. One must first of all consider the GDP per capita of these countries that we're talking about. GDP per capita in Africa is only $1,600, GDP in China $7,000, we hear a lot about on the news about these rapidly growing emerging economies but of course they are coming from a very low base where the standard of living is way below the standard of living that we experience in the UK and just for example the, the average GDP per capita figure in the UK is $41,000. So although we might be producing a lot, our potential to trade with these emerging markets is limited by the limited incomes in those economies. Secondly, if you consider countries such as China, they are only just beginning to embrace free market economics. They are very closed economies and so opportunities to trade in these markets where the economy is very closed, then those, op those trading opportunities are obviously very limited. And we must also remember whether or not China would agree and uh, acknowledge that they deliberately manipulate their currency to make their exports cheaper. We do know that the Chinese yuan is very undervalued and that of course is a form of protectionism in itself that is uh, one method of protecting your national economy is to deliberately manipulate the value of your currency, make it depreciate or devalue and make your exports very, very price competitive uh, and make, it, make their exports so competitive that the likes of the UK, the USA, Japan, where labour costs are many, many times greater than those in the developing nations, we simply cannot compete and so therefore it is difficult to trade and to find opportunities to trade. And then finally, we must consider, of course, that a lot of these emerging markets, we think of China, Africa, they are very rich in natural resources and therefore the, their actual need to trade with the, developing, the developed world is also relatively low because they are rich in natural resource. In the UK, of course, almost two-thirds of everything that we import is a raw material because we are not rich in natural resource. Well, that is just simply not the case for the likes of Africa and China. I think that's all there is to say about this particular table. And it does beg the question, is the slowdown in world trade due to falling GDP growth rates or is it some, due to something else? Now the something else is presented in the three or four figures which follow figure 4.1 and they're asking the question and begging the question is the slowdown in world trade perhaps due to greater regionalization of trade? And so what I'd like to do now is to move on to figure 4.2 
and to provide a little bit of background and a little bit of analysis to that particular set of data.